Are you ready to break away from this one mindset that I believe is holding back most of you, that's stopping you from reaching your full potential? My name is June Yu, and I'm going to be teaching you the process behind being consistent because I believe there really is a process, a systematic way to approach this. It's not something magically given to a select individual. It is something that you can continue to develop as a skill, and I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to do that. If you get anything out of this video, if you find it valuable, please, like it, please leave some comments. I wanna hear your thoughts and of course subscribe. We're gonna first start off with the story because I think it makes it a lot more comprehensive and understandable. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. I played sports all while growing up and that was mainly due to the fact that I had an older brother. He played sports first and as younger siblings like to do, we love to try and be like our older siblings. I'll admit that. And I learned how to throw a football, shoot a basketball, and we used to do those things together. And then eighth grade, I found my own little niche playing soccer. And I continued to do that all throughout high school. And I absolutely loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. And really every single day, at least an hour a day, I was doing something related to my sport. That could be cardiovascular training or strength training or skills training. And that was all done underneath the supervision of professionals, coaches and trainers. And really all I had to do was show up and execute the plan that they had set out for me. That was easy enough for me to do. And that allowed me to focus on the sport itself. So I loved every aspect of it. But in junior year, I had to make the decision of, do I continue doing that throughout college? Can I foresee a future in this, maybe even as a profession? And actually, in order to say yes to those things, you have to be good enough, <laughs> which I wasn't. I certainly wasn't good enough. And I was realistic enough. I knew I loved the sport so much, but yeah, I probably had a better return on my investment in the engineering routes. So I decided to go with that. I finished out my high school career. And that's all to say, when you are participating in competitive sports for a majority of your childhood, as a byproduct, you become fit. You are fit, both mentally and physically, because the game demands so much out of you. The game, in order to be competitive, you have to meet a certain standard in terms of your fitness. And every single day was your attempt at reaching that. And if you would take a few days off, if you would take too much time off, you wouldn't meet that standard and you would be pushed back in terms of your opportunities and your success. And so you were forced to continue meeting that standard on day in, day out basis, right? Now, things started to change for me in college because we all know how much big of a difference that college is in terms of a workload. It literally 5X for me in a very short period of time. That was a lot to handle. I didn't necessarily want to go to the gym anymore because after a seven hour day of going to classes, very intense classes, I didn't want to think about going to the gym and think about what I need to do there because I didn't even know what to do there. I just kind of did it robotically in high school with my coaches telling me what to do. And because I didn't have that accountability or structure, my priorities started to change and I would be away from doing anything fitness related for long bouts. And that became a serious issue because when you stop training after training for a while, there's some serious ramifications, but not physical ones. That's probably what people would assume would happen. But actually, if you've built a good physical basis, a foundation, that's not gonna go away in a few months. But the mental side will affect you because you're so accustomed to a high level of training and you're so accustomed to your body being able to perform a certain way. And if it can, then it really gets to you. And I was following a lot of these creators and motivators at that time that would put me in awe because I'm looking at what they're doing. I'm like, I want to be just like them. I want to continue being able to train as hard as them. And they would motivate me, right? But they would tell me to just do it. They would say, you got this. You, you can do it. If you believe it, just do it. Just do it. But I couldn't get myself to just do it. And I would have these short stints of motivation, though, that allowed me to have success for maybe a few weeks at a time, especially I remember in January, my freshman year, because it was the new year, I wanted to get back to my fitness routine. So literally for about a month, I was successful in doing everything I used to do. I used to do 10 mile runs a week. And so I made sure to incorporate that. I was going to the gym six times a week, I made sure to do that. I also made sure that I did skills training even on my own. And so I literally went back into my high school routine and I felt very good for the month of January. And then once winter break was over, school started picking up really quickly again and I lost that. 
And so there was this huge fluctuation. There's a lot of chaos happening in my brain because now I saw that I could do it. I see all these motivators telling me that I can do it and I should just do it. But now I can't get myself to continue doing it. So is there something wrong with me? There was some kind of blockage happening. I don't know. And I was having such a tough time, but something that I did do really well in high school that carried over in college was doing reflections. That was such an integral part of my daily routine. And eventually I would look at my journal to do my reflections and I would say, oh my goodness, it's been about six and a half months since I've been consistent training and doing anything physically active after having done that for my whole childhood, right? And Albert Einstein said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So if I'm seeing that what I'm doing for the last six and a half months isn't giving me consistent results and I can't stick with it for longer than a month, there's probably something wrong. And so I had to try a different approach. And I was looking up online of different types of workout regimens. I was learning a lot. I was like, this is too much. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is simplify it. Instead of me trying to go to the gym six times a week, instead of trying to do strength training four times a week, instead of doing 10 miles in a week in terms of running, I'm just gonna take away the skills training and the cardiovascular training. I'm actually gonna just get myself to go into the gym three times a week. That's what I told myself, right? And so once I got into the gym, I didn't even consider exactly what I was going to be doing. I didn't know if I was gonna do cardiovascular training on the treadmill or something of that nature. I didn't know if I was just gonna do strength training while I was at the gym, but I just knew that I wanted to get into the gym three times a week. And that sounded easy enough. I'm like, okay, June, if you can't do this, then, then there's really an issue because this is not even a fourth of what you were doing you can at least do three days a week. And I actually was able to do three days a week. And I did that for about three months successfully. I didn't put additional pressure onto myself. I literally just went to the gym three days a week. And that actually did something really powerful. And that is what this video is really about. You see, the biggest mistake we make from a mindset standpoint is we're so obsessed with these big leaps of progress. And we really, believe sometimes that that is the only thing that correlates to true success, but it's so unrealistic and so unsustainable and very demoralizing because for you to take those massive leaps in order for you to take on these ginormous endeavors, you need to have a level of discipline and consistency that's developed. And if you're younger and you haven't had the time to develop those things, imagine how demoralizing it is to continue failing. But you're setting yourself up for failure because these goals are so ginormous. That's what I was going through, right? I had expected myself to do exactly what I was doing in high school when I had all this structure, when I had all this help, when the reality of the matter is without having that level of support, and just going and trying to do all of that again, it took a lot of energy. It took a lot of discipline and consistency that I had not developed internally just yet. In terms of my own character development, I haven't done the evolution in my life to get to that point just yet. And by me taking that macro goal of being fit, right? And breaking that down into a micro goal of going to the gym, three times a week to the point that it was laughable. It was feasible. It was, of course, I can do that. It did two beautiful things for me that I really need you guys to get in your head. Number one, it built positive momentum moving forward. And number two, it established confidence because I was actually able to prove that I could follow through with my commitment, even though it was small. And once you have those two things going for you, it becomes a domino effect and it makes the next task that much easier as you start to progressively incrementally make those tasks harder you have the ability to continue successfully accomplishing them and so it started with three times a day in the gym and then i slowly ramped it up but not drastically i just did three times a week i'm going to be going to the gym i was able to do that for several months now i'm just going to add in one run a week i don't care the distance I don't care the time. I didn't want to put that pressure onto myself. I was just going to do the runs and I was able to do that successfully. And then I went four days in the gym and then 
few more months after, I did another run. And now I'm at the point in which I train almost every single day without missing a day. I do my runs. I actually take on and still play basketball with my friends over the weekend. And I've completely transformed my fitness back to where it was. And actually, I would even say that I'm more fit now than I ever was before, even in high school. But that's what I'm saying. People love these transformations. They love, oh, he was in this horrible place mentally and physically. And now look at him. He has the body, he has the mental clarity, he has the strength. I want to be just like him. And we look at just those two starting points and the ending points, that's the only part that we look at without understanding that there's a humongous middle there. And as we start to obsess over where we are and where we want to go to, we lose patience and we don't understand that this takes a lot of consistency and discipline. The mindset is this, I'm going to take these macro goals and I'm going to break them down and focus on the micro goals. I'm going to keep my head down and I'm gonna focus on stacking these micro wins. And sooner or later, you're gonna look up and realize you're closer to your macro goals than ever before. This applies to everything. And I really do believe it's a skill to be able to take a macro goal and bring it down to its micro level is not something that's easy. It's not something that comes naturally. I can give it a completely different example. If we're talking about how to be a great student, so what aspects make a good student? Well, there's a lot, but how about being organized, right? We know a disorganized student probably won't be able to have as much success, especially when it gets into the intensive studies in higher education. We can all probably agree to that. But being organized overnight after never being organized before is a ginormous step. That's a humongous leap of progress because the reality of the matter is there are people that or never organized their entire lives and never get to that point. And to expect that you can do it in a short span of time is very unrealistic. And for you to get there, it's gonna take a lot of consistency and discipline. And again, if you haven't developed those skills just yet, you're setting yourself up for failure. So let's break that down even further. What does being organized as a student look like? A clean room is probably a good start. I will clean my room every single day. I can make sure that my beds all made, I can make sure I put dirty laundry away, I can make sure I vacuum, that's easy enough, right? And you think about it and say, maybe not. <laughs> I only make my room clean once every several months whenever I feel like it. That's probably still too big of a macro goal. And so the goal is here to continue breaking it down until you get to the most fundamental rudimentary element. And maybe you get to the point in which you say, I will just make my desk clean every single day. I can do that. I can just throw away trash and just make sure my monitors look good. That sounds easy enough. And I'm laughing because it's feasible, right? That's to the point you want to get to. And so you say, all right, now that I've established and identified a micro goal that I want to pursue, let's figure out how long I want to successfully do this for. Maybe you give yourself a week, seven days. For seven days, every single day, I'm going to make my desk clean. And for those seven days, you do just that. You make your desk clean, but you don't do anything more than that. You don't wanna just go out of your way and for example, clean your entire room on a Wednesday, the third day while you're on this seven day journey. Why? Because it creates additional chaos and subconsciously creates these standards and expectations for yourself. So probably the reason why you did it on Wednesday is because you just had a heightened sense of motivation because for two days you felt really good. Now the issue is on Thursday and Friday, you start not to feel so good and you start to recognize, oh my goodness, I was able to do more and now I can't get myself to do that. There must be something wrong with me. And you start to jump the gun a little bit. You start to progress too quickly and that just creates additional chaos. This is about practicing following through with what you said that you would do. If you said that you're going to make your desk for seven days, just do that successfully. If you fail after seven days, which is very possible, okay? Because a lot goes on in our lives, then you just make that goal a little bit more micro. But if you succeed, you make it a little bit more macro. You start to progressively increase the difficulty. And so maybe after seven days of making your desk every day, maybe you graduate to making your room clean eventually. And you do that for a certain time point. But again, this is a practice and you continue to develop that. And don't think that this is elementary. This isn't something that, oh, 
it's not going to work for me. This is genuinely a skill that needs to be established so that you can pursue big endeavors in your life. If you are always just jumping for these humongous goals and leaps of success, you will continue to fail and you will continue to lack the confidence and the momentum to continue pushing yourself forward. That's an issue. That's one example of how you do that in school, which is completely different than the fitness side, but you see how it always applies. In life, that's the mindset you need to have. Can I take this macro goal in front of me and can I be different than what everyone else is doing? Because I promise you, most people will have that macro goal and only consider that macro goal instead of doing the practice and learning the skill of how can I make this more of a micro goal and continue to build these over time. If you go back to the fitness example and what my coaches were doing for me in high school, that's exactly what coaches are meant for. Coaches understand the bigger picture. Coaches understand, okay, my goal is in November. I wanna make sure June is on the biggest stage performing at his very best. And they're good enough to be able to see how to incrementally get there. When you lose that structure, can you do it for yourself? I hope that after listening to this video, you see how important it is.